In focus today, the cutting edge of medical research. I'm very pleased to have with us in the studio Dr. Don Cleveland. He is an NMSU alumnus and he is a researcher at the University of California at San Diego. Dr. Cleveland, thank you so much for being with us. My pleasure to be back in Las Cruces. It's great to have you here. You know, I want to begin with something that's very fascinating. It's called gene silencing therapy. Tell us what that is, how it works, and the conditions where it may be helpful. So um, in the major neurodegenerative diseases, all of them, where we know genetics, uh, the, ge the genes do something bad. And so if you could just turn off the bad gene, you'd be directly on the disease mechanism. We designed a strategy using designer DNA-based drugs that know how to bind to the intermediate encoded by a specific gene and to then target it to be destroyed. So we can silence any gene within the nervous system. And now that strategy has been in, in, in use now in four trials and in three different diseases for silencing the disease-causing gene. Okay, this must be incredibly exciting for you. It, it is. So the, uh, it's, it's the early days. We know that it can work in principle and now the uh, excitement is whether it can work in practice. And you're getting to that point now, doing clinical trials to test the therapy. Tell me about that. So the, in the most abundant human motor neuron disease, which we call Lou Gehrig's disease, or more properly, uh, amyotrophic lateral sclerosis, or ALS, there we know the causes of some uh, uh, instances of disease are mutation in specific genes, and we are using our designer drugs in introduced into the nervous system to silence those genes. Okay. The trials are underway. We've demonstrated they're likely, that the first one's likely to be safe, and now we, we'll move on to efficacy. All right, well, we can't wait to hear more about that. Hopefully when those trials are over, we'll have you back and, yeah. and talk about the results. You also are known for identifying a protein that accumulates in Alzheimer's disease and is also present with traumatic brain injury. Tell me about that. Yes, fresh out of uh, graduating from New Mexico State in uh, 1972 in physics, I went to graduate school in biochemistry and uh, my project identified this protein. It's named tau. I purified tau and showed its properties and we subsequently recognized that it misassembles and templates other good molecules to misassemble into intraneuronal tangles that are a hallmark of Alzheimer's disease. And we've most more recently discovered that that, that misassembly of that protein tau is what is at the center of uh, chronic brain injury, what you might call National Football League disease, where in head injuries lead to blossoming uh, damage that just grows from focal points, and the underlying component of those is tau. Okay, so incredibly important research. This has also been talked about, as you know, a lot in, about in boxing as well. Absolutely, so. absolutely. It's exactly the same in boxing. It's very well uh, uh, demonstrated in, in football, but it's almost certain to be true in all of these contact sports where there's, uh, where there's repetitive uh, uh, brain, brain injury and head-to-head -head contact. Okay, as you mentioned, you graduated uh, from NMSU with a degree in physics. Uh, tell me about your time here, how it led to your graduate work and then your eventual career. Well, I was, I always thought I was going to be a physicist. I uh, went, I, I enjoyed my time here with the physics department. And then, uh, then I realized when I went to graduate school that uh, you could use those basic lessons learned here and from my initial lack of confidence, I realized uh, actually that uh, New Mexico State uh, prepared me very well. And my fellow graduate students, I went to graduate school at Princeton, all of the successful students in my class, there were four of us who were especially successful, all of us came from public universities. And uh, that the public universities, not even the premier public universities, that they prepared us very well. Three of us have been, are, been elected to the National Academy of Science, and the last uh, became the CE, CEO of Genentech, the company who has the largest dollar-valued va cancer uh, drugs in the, in the world, and is now the chairman of the board of Apple. 
That's really interesting, and so it's important to talk about at this time when funding is so much under stress here in New Mexico and all around the country, funding public universities. Absolutely, I, I, I just, the, the value that I, that I, that to me and I think to my generation from the, the public education from universities like New Mexico State University, it's, it's, it, it, it's amazing value for the state. I work now for a public university, the University of California, Again, an amazing value for the state of California. Uh, I, I'm really, you, you cannot save money by, by devaluing what a higher education does for communities like this one, like the community in San Diego, actually I think for all the communities. Okay, and full disclosure, I should say I'm an Aggie too, so I, I mean, this is not completely, <laughs> <laughs> completely uh, by unbiased, right? So uh, what advice would you give to students uh, who are here at NMSU now or other public universities uh, to make the most of their education? Don't sell yourself short. So the, uh, uh, I know that I did not develop uh, the confidence that people, that an education here would uh, really prepare me for uh, achievement at, at high levels, but it did. And so I would say don't sell yourself short. Uh, choose what you want to do and then, you, then go do it. And remember, there will be many bumps in the road. So the most important characteristic for success in science, and probably success in general, is perseverance. That's great advice. Uh, you've come back to Las Cruces to speak about your research and talk with students. What does what being an Aggie mean to you personally? Uh, uh, being, being an Aggie. Uh, actually, I'm a New I have to say I'm a New Mexican. I grew, I grew up in New Mexico, I, and I, while I don't live here now, I see the beauties both of the state, of the lifestyle, and, uh, and for New Mexico State, really what, it, what I know it means to the community more broadly across the state. Uh, it's, it's, uh, it's an institution of a really high value uh, that, has, that really does represent New Mexico in a very positive way. I have one final question for you. As you know, there is uh, a, really a movement happening now all over the country. Uh, the March for Science in Washington, yeah. D.C., here in Las Cruces and all over, all over the country, and concerns about cuts to federal funding for research. Uh, as we conclude, your thoughts on this? Uh, I, I very much hope that uh, the Democrats and Republicans can come together. Uh, funding, science is what propelled America to the top of the, of the world. We, we failing to, to continue in funding uh, science would be an amazing blunder, uh, would be abdicating uh, our position of world leadership that we've held now for, for 40, 40 years, unrivaled. It would be, if you want to uh, make a, if you want to maintain a great America, we need uh, to maintain its greatness in science. Dr. Don Cleveland, he is an NMSU alum and a researcher at the University of California at San Diego. Dr. Cleveland, thank you for being with us. Absolutely, my pleasure.